Okay, exercise 4A. So this is on quadratics. Quadratics are a really, really important topic to understand in A-level maths. They come up all over the place and there's going to be loads of them throughout the course. So to start with, we've got x squared plus 2x minus 15. And we've got some of this one done for us. So they've told us it's x minus 3. So we just need to work out what the other factor is. So the first thing to look at is how many x squareds have we got? Well, we've got one x squared here, so this times this has to equal x squared. So it's got to be x times x. Uh, the next thing to look at is this minus 15. So we need two numbers that multiply to give us minus 15. Uh, because we've already been told one of them, it's quite easy. So minus 3 times 5 will give us minus 15, so plus 5. But remember, two red numbers need to multiply to give 15, and they need to add to give minus 2. So 5 plus minus 3 does give us plus 2. So just do that quick check. And you should get in the habit of trying to expand these afterwards. So quick expansion, x times x, x squared, minus 3x, um, plus 5x, minus 15, and just check that that is the same as that, so 5 take 3 does give us 2. Right, next one. So we got x squared minus 9x minus 10. So I'm going to set my brackets up. I know that there's only one x squared, so that tells me that both these numbers are just going to be x's. And now I need to think of two numbers that multiply to give minus 10, while adding to give minus 9. So we'll make a list of that. Multiply to give minus 10, then add to give minus 9. So if you're ever stuck on these, this is quite an easy one, but you can get stuck. Uh, you want to write down what factors you know of minus 10, or of 10, and you can worry about the sign in a minute. So I know we could have 2 and 5, we could have 1 and 10, or we could swap those around. But those are the only factors available to us. So which of these factors might add up to give us 9? Well, 5 and 7 add to give 7, or you could subtract them to get um, 3, so 3 and 7 there. 1 and 10, you could add them to get 11, or you could subtract them to get 9. So I know straight away it's got to be 1 and 10. So I'm going to write 1 and 10 here. The order doesn't matter because we've just got x's. Now all we need to do is work out what the signs have to be. So in order to get a minus, I know one of them is going to be negative, one of them is going to be positive. And we want to add them to get minus 9. So just by thinking about it, I can say, okay, well if it's minus 10 plus a 1, that's going to give us the minus 9. So minus there and plus there. And because that one's a little bit trickier, let's expand it to check again. So x times x is x squared x times minus 10 is minus 10x, x times 1 is plus x, and then lastly, 1 times 10 is minus 10. So if you work all this out, you get minus 10 plus 1, which gives us the minus 9, so this is correct. Okay, next one's actually a little bit easier, so we've got common factor 1 to do, so um, number 3, 6x squared plus 2x is a hint here, take out a common factor. So what's a common factor of 6x squared and 2x? Well, we can get a common factor of x, but we can also get a common factor of 2. So we're going to take out 2x as a common factor. So what times 2x gives us 6x squared? Well, we're left with a 3 and another x. And you can just quickly go times these 3, 2 times 3 is 6, x times x is x squared. Okay, um, what's left then when we times when we take out a factor of 2x? Well, we're dividing this by 2x, so we're going to get a 1 there. So we can check this just by times it out. 6x squared plus 2x, so I can be sure that it is correct. Question 4. 49 minus 4x squared. These ones are a little harder to spot. You have to be good with your squares. But um, I know 49 is a square number, I know 4 is a square number, and x as well. Although it's not a number, it is squared, so it's, it counts as a square number. So this is the difference of two squares, um, and we learn the difference of two squares 
Let's just write out a squared minus b squared factorizes to give us a plus b times a minus b. So to factorize this one, we just need to use that fact. So I'm going to get 7 plus 2x times by 7 minus 2x. And that's just something that you have to learn is the difference of 2 squares. Okay, so question 5 is a little bit harder. Um, so 5, 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. This one's quite tricky. Uh, we've got to work out what's going to go in the brackets, so I can start drawing the brackets out. Now, the first thing is we need to have a 2x at the front somewhere. In order to get this, one of our brackets has to have a 2x in it, and the other one's got to have an x in it. So we still need two numbers that multiply together to give us 3. So over here, we'll write factors of 3, or even factors of minus 3. So we can either have minus 3 times 1, or minus 1 times 3. So we now all we have to do is work out where 1 and 3 are going, or where minus 1 and 3 are going, or where minus 3 and 1 are going, and get them the right, right way round. It helps to try and think about where the 5 is going to come from. So 5 is going to come from 2x times this number, plus x times this number. And then really it's just a case of putting these in the right place. So if we quickly, I'll do this on the whiteboard, but you could just do this in your head if you wanted to. We're just going to try quickly some of these numbers in these different places. So if I just randomly, minus 3 and plus 1. So that does multiply to give us minus 3. Let's try timesing it out. 2x times minus 3 gives us minus 6x, and then plus 1 gives us minus 5x. So we're close, but we've got a minus. So if we try changing the signs around try plus 3 and minus 1. They still multiply to give us minus 3, so that's still good. Um, and let's try it out. So 2x times 3 is positive 6x. Take 1 gives us our positive 5x. So this has got to be right. And we can check it by timesing it out. So 2x times x gives us 2x squared. 2x times 3 gives us plus 6x. Minus 1 times x gives us minus x. Minus 1 times 3 gives us minus 3. Those two are going to become of x, so yes. Right, question six. So we've got 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. Right, so again, a little bit more difficult this time. Um, we can write the two brackets out. But because 4 isn't prime, there's a few more factors that could start the brackets. We're either going to have 2 and 2, or 4 and 1. So a couple of ways around this. It might be easier instead, then, to think about what number's going to go here. So we know these two numbers have to multiply to give us 1. Well, I can only think of two numbers that multiply to give us 1, and they are both 1. So either we're going to have plus 1 in each spot, or a minus 1 in each spot. So then we just need to try and figure out whether it's going to be 4x and 1, or whether it's going to be 2x and 2x. Now, looking at this equation, I can kind of already spot it's going to be 2x, um, but you're welcome to try both. So if we tried 4x and x, go plus and plus. 4x squared, yes, that works, but then we get 4x times 1 is 4x. Add 1 will give us 5x. Even if we had two minus signs, we'd end up with minus 5x. So it can't be 4x at the beginning. So the only other two factors we could use to get to 4x squared is going to be a 2x and a 2x. Let's check this out. So 2x times 1 is, two, is, is 2x, plus 2x times 1 is 2x. Those two are going to add together to give us the 4x then 1 times 1 does give us the 1. So we can try multiplying this out as well, which ends up as what we are after. So again, we can check it's right. So really, whenever you're doing these, you're just checking for factors, putting them in the right place, and working out which ones fit. OK, question 7 uh, changes it a bit. So now we're trying to solve the quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. I'll write the quadratic formula out, but you ought to remember it anyway. It's x minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So you can just not see that. 
Okay, so question seven, we're trying to solve x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. So if you want to quickly write down what a, b, and c are, a is 1, b is minus 5, c is 4. So x is going to equal minus b, where well, we've got minus and minus, so that's going to become a positive. So 5 plus or minus d square root, b squared, 5 squared, or minus 5 squared is still going to be positive, so 25 minus 4 times 1 times c, which is 4 as well, all divided by 2, 2a. Two so we just need to simplify this and work it out. So we get x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 25, take 16, all over 2, which becomes 5 plus or minus the square root of 9 over 2 which becomes 5 plus or minus 3 over 2. So we get x equals 5 plus 3 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. Or we get 5 take 3 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. So those are our two solutions, 4 and 1. Right, next one, uh, question 8. So 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 is 0. So again, let's write out a, b, and c. So a is 3, b is 2, c is minus 1. So x equals b squared, so 4. No, it's not. x equals minus b. It's so minus 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4ac. Four so 4 times 3 times minus 1, all over 2a. a was 3, so over 6 this time. So we get x equals minus 2 plus or minus. Uh, so here we're going to get 4 times 3, which is 12, times minus 1 is minus 12. Minus and minus is plus. So we're going to get root of 16 over 6. So x equals minus 2 plus or minus root 16 is 4 over 6. So minus 2 plus 4 gives us positive 2 over 6. So that gives us a third. Or minus 2 take 4 is minus 6. Minus 6 divided by 6 is minus 1. So x is a third, or x is minus 1. All right, uh, what next? So question 9. x squared equals 3x plus 2. So the hint here says rearrange to get equals 0 first. So we need to get all of these terms onto one side. So x squared minus 3x minus 2 equals 0. Then we can write down a, b, and c. a is 1, b is minus 3, c is minus 2. So then we get our quadratic equation or quadratic formula. x equals minus b. So minus minus 3 is going to be plus 3. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 9 minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is minus 2, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. So x equals 3, plus or minus. So here we go. Um, 4 times 2 is 8, so we're going to get 9 plus 8, which is going to be root of 17, all over 2. And that's as good as we can get. We can't simplify the square root of 17. So plus or minus square root of 17 over 2. Okay, the last three you're asking us to factorise and solve it. So we're going to factorise it and then we're going to solve each of our factors. So the first one, which is number 10. 10x 10 squared minus 2x equals 0. So again, we're looking for a common factor between those two terms. So both terms have a 2 in common and an x in common. So we're going to take out 2x. We're going to be left with 5x minus 1 equals 0. Now, because it equals 0, either this whole term is 0 or this term here is 0. So that's what we're doing when we're solving a quadratic. We're trying to find each term that makes this equation 0. So if 2x equals 0, it means this whole quadratic becomes 0 because 0 times anything is 0. So this tells me that our solution is x equals 0. The other solution, we get 5x minus 1 equals 0, so the whole bracket could be 0, and then 0 times something is also 0. So we can set this one equal to 0, add the 1, 
divide by five, so we get x equals one fifth. So those are our two solutions. Notice if we're solving an equation, we've got to have equal signs in our answer. Okay, question 11. 9x minus 27x squared equals zero. So again, looking for common factors. Uh, so we can find a common factor of three in both of these and of x in both of these, or we can actually find a common factor of nine in both of these as well. So we take out a factor of 9x, we're going to get 1 minus 3x equals 0. So divided both bits by 9x, so 1 and minus 3. So either this one is 0, or 1 minus 3x is 0. So this gives us a solution of x equals 0, and this gives us a solution of 1 equals 3x. So x equals 1 third. And last one, fourteen x squared minus twenty one x equals zero. So we need a factor of fourteen and twenty one. So if you think about that, there is a factor that they have in common, uh, which is seven. So we can take out a factor of seven x from both of these. So seven x, we're going to get two x left over there, minus three there equals zero. So again, either x equals 0 from this one, or 2x minus 3 equals 0, which gives us 2x equals 3, which gives us x equals 3 over 2.